Hey guys. Hey, back. I was going to start. I was oh. going to dive in. Yeah, dive, dive, dive. sitting down to taste another great tea for our website, something we do on a regular basis, but today we thought we'd invite you along for the ride. If you're new here, hello, I'm Jen from Zhen Tea. And I'm Phil. At Zhen Tea, we specialize in fine tasting great Chinese tea. So if you're also a tea lover and would love to learn more about tea and tea culture, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget the notification bell so that you will be notified as soon as we have a new video. Let's get the kettle on. Well, as usual, I'm gonna start off by warming up the whole guy one. Maybe while you warm the guy one, I could have a peek at the leaf. Mm, that's a great Thanks. idea. So I chipped the tea off of the cake or off of the bing. So I'm gonna, I know this is the, I wanna have a look at the outside and the inside. Yeah, as I thought. So the, the inside has got a really nice sheen or luster, which I find uh, quite beautiful. That's the inside. Mm -hmm. By inside and outside, the outside would be what was touching the paper. And the inside was that stuff tucked in. Right. I prefer to try to pick up the aroma of the dry leaf, especially yeah. older teas after it's in a humid gaiwan. It's going to be a lot more telling than just a straight up dry leaf. Mm. And this one is, as expected, pretty faint, but it does have some nice woodiness, Ooh. some nice uh, Age, I don't know if I can say age, some sort of antique aromas, some woodiness, a bit of yes, leather. Yes, antique maybe. leather. Oops. Faint, I should add, it's faint. These aren't jumping mm. out at me. These were pretty subdued, which is precisely why I didn't bother to smell the purely dry leaf, not even in the humid guy one. I suspect. Well, that's be. interesting because when I open the cake, as mm. soon as I unfold that paper, I could smell that right there. That I was pleasant like, moment. Mm. It really has that whiskey woody smoke-ish. Mm. Like, well, oh, this is a rings, so. Wow. Mm. Mm. I didn't get much smoke off of the humid leaf, but right, definitely right. on the lid, I get that, uh, like you say, that whiskey woody, sort of that um, peaty, smoky-ish. Yeah, peaty one, peaty those smoky, ones. Yeah. I think maybe that's why, that's why I like those, because it reminds me of Boer. Mm. She does like the peated whiskeys. First infusion. Wow, you can see all the uh, tri trichrome, mm, trichrome. Wow. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's a very the liquor is very luscious. Like a, you know what I'm saying? It, like yeah. a, n it doesn't become murky or cloudy no, because vibrant. there is. It's it's, it's, it's vibrant. Yeah. Yet it has the. Um, suspended trunk. yeah you can see the abundance of that hair but it's not by any means cloudy oh that's beautiful mm. oh that's nice i'm going to take a note on that that yeah. has some nice um i don't know i want to say shen sharpness <laughs> yeah it does Really a bright, really bright aroma in the bottom cup. Mm. Um, uh, but it also has that um, sweet, a really deep yes. sweet. Uh, I wouldn't describe that as a, like, a, you know, honey or sugar or anything mm. like that, but more of a kind of, what would that be? Like for me, I think of a red bean paste. Something no, I was going to say a vegetal that, sweet. That is sweet, mm -hmm. but the thing is not overly sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Vegetal. Mm. Not for me, actually. Mine is a starchy sweet. Right. That's, right. I was like, mm, something doesn't quite match what I'm feeling. Yeah, I know what you mean. It has that green connotation, but that's not what I was going for either. Red bean was perfect. Like that gentle right. sweet. The aroma has that too. That gentle sweetness. Yeah. I think what I'm trying to say is, I'm just trying to explain myself. Cause you know, when you talk about sweet or floral, it's really broad, vague, yeah. it's really vague. Oh, but yeah. um, I think when, when I'm trying to describe a sweet that I describe as, you know, fruit sweet or more regular vegetable sweet or those sweet, I think I'm trying to say this sweet is light, Philip. Well, if I'm trying to say like, say sweet potato sweet or like red bean sweet is because this sweet itself gave me certain depth. It's a thicker, starchier, like that's thicker type of sweet, if that make any sense. And it's deep in the background. Mm. And the room goes quiet. <laughs> wow, this is going to be a fun one for me, a tricky one. <laughs> it's challenging. I, yeah. It's integrated, um, you know, it's, it's, yeah. not, it's not popping with, with typical it's, key flavor notes. Yeah, you know, at a certain it's, point it's you were like, full. It's I really can full. pick up a few notes, but those notes by no means describe what this tea tastes like. And it's so integrated, like we're trying hard to separate the notes, but sometimes yeah. it's just almost impossible. Yeah. Like, is there a little bit of that smokiness? Yes but it's not, I drink that all, oh, that's a smoky no, tea, not at all. right? Is that a sweet tea? Uh, yes, it's all in, the, in there, but I also wouldn't call that a sweet tea. It has all of those elements, woodiness, yeah. sweetness, that woody, smokiness, that's a, but they're all really tied together and none mm. of them are, are uh, none oh, of them are Smell popular. this, uh, th is this whiskey or not? It really has that uh, sweet, like a sweet not alcohol but when you finish mm -hmm. the whiskey mm -hmm. the, the the empty cup also have that kind of a i'm not an alcoholic <laughs> i just feel like i say that a lot because yeah we barely because i think of, <laughs> maybe it's a habit why you drink a beer, I wouldn't be so like a smell everything. But when I drink, uh, you know, whiskeys, I might be more smelling every little thing. Oh my God. Oh, you gotta smell this. Wow. That, that warm leaf smell. I'm not gonna mix the infusions. Thank you. Isn't that stunning? The second, so I am on the second infusion. Really open up. Yeah, I'm eager to get to that because this one is, I've been quite quiet over all of my sips. So what I'm focusing on here when I'm sipping is I want to make sure I'm breathing over the tea, which I have been. And that really brings the aroma together with the, the liquor flavor. It ties everything together. This is a gorgeous sip. Um, my, my only note on the flavor of the liquor is still simply integrated, so. I don't know, this, this leaf smell is just so divine. Lingering. It also lingers. It also has that uh, pine-ish kind of, uh, it's not that kind of a wood that is really dull. The, you know, by saying pine, mm. I think I'm trying to say it has the like upper lifting of lighter yeah a more aromatic wood and warming kind mm. of a mm. oh. 
I just, I wish there was perfumes like that. I would like, just imagine where that to sleep is. Mm. Oh. <laughs> this reminds me, I was thinking of having this tea in the Thanks. Forbidden City or something like yeah, ideally it, no tourists of Forbidden City. Right, like, right. Just but an those... antique location yes. to match this these flavors and yes. these notes. It really I've written for Oof. the wet leaf antique wood. Um, I really get that. Um, I didn't get necessarily a pine, but I do get what you mean. It's more of a of a really uh, it's not like an old wood. It's a wood that yeah. has a, 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 a certain life an outgoing it. wood mm. aroma, mm. which mm. is usually pine it's more like a hiking like and suddenly the forest uh, transition. Mm. So it's not overwhelming like, oh, this is a pine. You know how the Christmas there's those candles and those. So that's yeah. not what I'm saying. Not at all. I'm more like, a, uh, say, from the, say, the deciduous forest, suddenly you transition to this coniferous uh, forest and yeah. that kind of a, almost unsensible, but you know, you changed See, that yeah. surrounding kind of thing, yes, that yes. kind of a smell. It's more of a cedarish uh, aroma probably to me. Ah, oh, cedar, that uh, could be. I, I'm not very good with all those needle trees. <laughs> right, right. Mm. Much Just a needle tree. tree is what I was thinking if I'm... <laughs> Cedar. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And it, it has that uh, shampoo. It still has that shampoo taste, but I think the, for me, the, the mouthfeel especially, and the tasting notes, that edge is pretty much gone. It's like a... Yeah. You know, I don't have a, it's a good much point, of the bite. I mentioned that the bottom cup had that Shen sharpness mm. in the bottom cup, but I never felt any no. bite. No. This is really it's smooth. It's really rounded, smooth, and uh, that. Even like in the taste, I would, because sometimes with the Yang Shen, we would use the words like those um, animal ish, like. Uh, oh, short barnyard. Yeah, um, that kind of description. We might say brisk, right? Which right. Means it has that little. That little um, piquant, that <laughs> pick that I should Yeah, before. but this one I wouldn't use the barnyard. I didn't even taste much mm -hmm. of the barnyard. No, it's all antique wood. Uh, less leather in the flavor. I did get some leather on the dry leaf. I'm looking. Totally back agree. To remember, totally agree. There's no real sort of um, animal skin or leather or those no. concepts in no. the no. in the aroma in the flavor. Of the liquor, it's all in a nicer way. You wouldn't think of those old style village smell, <laughs> mm. which know, can be nice in a tea, but yes, this one doesn't yes. have that. This is more like you said, more walk in the woods, transitioning to mm. uh, an evergreen forest. And my second brew is much uh, mm, bold, yeah, bold. Mm. However, it's not ripping my face off. Oh, not bold. even close, like how rounded I'm really. Just the profile of the first one was quite subtle, as the first infusion will tend to be, and the second yeah. infusion is it's really, just... it's really there. It's really meaty. It's uh, not flavor-wise, but in terms mm. of its consistency and the presence. Um, really smooth around a mouthfeel. How does my mouth feel after, a few moments after the tea, while I've been breathing slash talking over it? It's Clean, still there. Refreshed, full of flavor still. But, yes. Uh, but yeah, really refreshing and clean and no, no glominess, nothing sticking to no. my mouth that, that makes me want to go. Very you know, quenching, I found. Quenching. Like you, my whole throat feels really wow. smooth, and not smooth, like uh, moisturized. I don't know how would I say that. Like I do feel really quenched in my mouth and my throat feeling was really good. And it still has that, the liquor color still has that, um, luminous um, brightness and it's still gorgeous you know kind of twinkling with these trichomes really yeah. pretty you can see the red tone huh and there's that red tone yeah i yeah. started with the color amber um amber gold it's getting deepening to the amber side as we continue here yeah it's not a in terms of the tone and stuff it's just it's not just the concentration like how strong the brew it mm. when it has the tone in the liquor even when it's lighter infusions 
mm. it will still have a little bit of that. Oh, this is quite gorgeous. Isn't that starchy? Doesn't sound very appetizing. But you know, sweet potato. Like, have you smelled the raw, fresh sweet potato? Mm. That's what I think of. Do you eat raw potato? Raw sweet potato? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? Because I sometimes take a little bit of bite of this or that raw, which is a little bit weird. For her, so <laughs> she never knows the what surprise? I, what's in and what's out. You eat a raw potato, right? Which. A little bite, okay. I don't okay, eat okay, whole okay, raw okay. potatoes. It's a little bit weird. People for will me. be worried for my health, <laughs> mental and physical. <laughs> but I do. We we have the history of eating raw sweet potato. Oh. Oh, not too much, not too much. But eat a little bit because it's sweet and juicy. But when you cut it open, you know how the they have a a little bit. It's not fruit, so it only have a little bit of the juice. Mm. But that refreshing, starchy, sweet. Third infusion. Huh? Mm. So, when we do uh, tastings at home, especially for uh, the website, it's basic because I'm the brewer. I know what I am brewing, but him is always in the dark, <laughs> trying right. to right. eliminate a little bit of a bias. Eliminate unintentional mm. bias or mm. intentional bias, and just uh, yeah. So I'm never. I'm never given the full presentation till after the fact. Well, that's actually a really uh, a struggling start, but now I found uh, it actually help accelerate the tasting mm -hmm. ability because now when you taste your reaction, I can mm -hmm. tell how much you're getting from the tea. Third infusion, okay? Thickness level through the roof. Okay, mm. it's now it's really delightful. Uh, it, not that it wasn't delightful. We started with a smooth, rounded first infusion. Yeah. But the texture's popping now. Yeah. Um, a mini <laughs> nasty tip you can try at home is try to, like, if you having. Uh, this is a struggle. bonus for people who watch this far, okay? <laughs> These are pro tips we don't give away at the beginning of the Sometimes video. people struggle with texture. What is texture? It's not a tasting note. It's literally the texture. I often use a broth, like you know, a broth you you put on heat for five minutes. It's not like those gelatin, like two hours, three hours thick broth. So that's the texture we're talking about tea. And I found something uh, might not be very elegant, but it does help filling that texture. Is uh, like how you use the mouthwash to swoosh in your mouth. That would help. At the same time, close your teeth because how the liquid press through your teeth, that sensation tells mm -hmm. you how dense the liquid is, mm -hmm. right? So I found that's a little thing right. that was very if, helpful for sensation. And if you're not familiar with that, that might sound super weird, but you will <laughs> notice, and I say this because I did it, I started with no understanding of the texture. It was really foreign to me when we start to talk about both broth and tea and how the texture of the broth can give you a hint of a soup broth can give you a hint about the quality of the soup real bone fake you know powder whatever <laughs> similar with tea the texture of the liquor you might not be sensitive to that but use some of these tips and it will come and pay attention of course well since the water is uh, boiling we're just gonna share with you some of the cool lid and cool leave notes which was shocking to us of how right this is really um like an evergreen wood sweet or a, yeah. like a cedar wood sweet i don't yeah. know one of the oh, just it's interesting like you want to take your time with a tea like this and you know smell the lid when it's warm smell it's the not lid. hard for you now to have a few smell a few sip to know the rough the rough yeah, yeah the where does 
the Steve Long. Yeah, the yeah. Great and group, the mediocre group, or the right, right. And, and and take your time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, you know, quote unquote, take your time and smell the yeah. roses. Yeah. The lid when it's warm, the lid when it's cool. How is it different? The yeah. bottom cup, either your bottom cup or the bottom of mm -hmm. your sharing pump, mm -hmm. when it's just emptied and pretty warm. Give it a moment, let it cool, smell it. Right, how lingering all those notes mm. could be and changing, but still, it's, uh, you know, when you are splurged to a finer tea, you really have to, uh, you don't have to, but I prefer to enjoy every aspect of how splendid a good tea is. Yeah. Like, that's what I pay for, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and it's, uh, just the experience is, you know, it just lends to the whole experience yeah. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, how's the leaf? Let's have a look at that. Look at the color. It's a beautiful red brown, deep mm. red brown. The luster that we saw on the dry leaf when we started, it persists, okay? You've got this silky, um, somewhere tucked in between matte and sheen. Mm. You've got that kind of a luster. This yep. is another real telling material indicator. And by material, I mean the quality of the yeah, leaf. You... It's telling you about the quality of the leaf without even touching it. Later, I'm going to touch it. I'm going to yeah. rub it. And I was going to remind you guys, don't be shy just to play with your teeth, literally. Mm. It's just so satisfying it's when you look at leaves like this. Mm -hmm. You know, once you see a lot of brew leaves and stuff, you gradually just develop that sense of what what do we mean by luster? What do we mean by shame or silky or silky or the tone? What is red? What's the range of the red or bronze we're right, talking? Right. Talking what? Yeah, it's not bright red. It's not. A yeah, yeah, light, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. But, but I think folks know it's yeah. like that that plant-like redness, that mm. oxidized redness we're mm. seeing here. And yeah. This tea could go forever. Yeah, that was a really quick infusion and it's still got a really nice deep amber. It has that red element shining through the gold liquor. I'm gonna have a look at that. Well, maybe I'll smell the hot leaf before it cools too much. Yeah. Wow, that's wonderful. Right, I'm just mesmerized. Look at that. <sighs> this is something quite interesting. How the aroma when I smell that is rather faint, I would say, compared to when I have a sip, that mm. explosion. Yeah, the liquor isn't booming with aroma. No. In fact, it's, it's even more subdued oh. than I would say the second and third infusion, which had yeah. a little bit more. Now I find it's very subdued. Oh. I, t I like to call this like a, when you see this either with the leaf or sometimes with the liquor, the greedy liquor. <laughs> Which it gets me excited because usually right. that means once you sip it and aerate that in your mouth and breathe over it. That's all in the liquor. It really is such a contrast to just smell vis-a-vis -vis when you drink. Mm. Oh, and also when we um, brew for tasting notes for our website, we don't use, <laughs> we don't use any high-end water we use um, tap filtered tap water reason being i found that distilled water is a little bit too distilled like it really too how should i say it. yeah yeah it's a it affects my in, enjoyment when i sip tea while our filtered tap water what i like is it's pretty clean but not so clean like the distilled uh so it's easy for me to clean it. I can tell, okay, not too much mineral, which the mineral plays a big part when it comes to taste. Mm. And um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, <laughs> it's, I found the rendering the uh, tea rather neutral. It doesn't downplay or it doesn't enhance much of that. But if, uh, you know, 
when when you have our TN stuff, especially when you are having some of our supreme teas or really um, uh, upper level teas, I do recommend, uh, if possible, getting the store bought like uh, uh, spring water. Evian. 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 Yeah. Evian. So that that one because for me the reason I just uh, I recommend it is not because of how unique it is is how easy to find. Um, their distribution is safe no matter where you are. You can get right. that, and I know that quality is pretty good. Like, but if you were in like Canada, Quebec, Ontario, uh, Esca was a pretty. We we love that water too. Like there are things you could play with, mm -hmm. but Evian because of how well distributed. I think it's a very great water to start sure. with. Yeah. Yeah. St start with the one that you kind of know and trust is always a good place too if you didn't hear mm. one here, right? If you've had a shampoo with it and it worked well, mm -hmm. good starting point, mm. right? Mm. But imagine with the proper uh, spring water and because I... I was going to say like our, this one I'm excited to try the Wakefield water with. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Winter Wakefield? No. Summer. Actually, I was going to say no. I'm going to try the water per se and do. Sometimes I got to uh, do something with the water because in the winter or summer, I forgot. Sometimes that Wakefield, like the spring water, the, the Ooh, organic spring water could be a little bit uh, fluctuates throughout the oh, year. Absolutely. So I got to keep an eye on it. But store bought is pretty standard. Mm. Um, but just uh, the previous video we did with the water really a strong reminder of how much a water could do to a tea. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just want to, it was pretty a big deal for me. This is becoming even more bold. I've taken another note, bold but respectful. Very, again, um, there's just enough edge but no bite. It's got what I would characterize as a really strong presence. Mm. It's, uh, it's right there, thick, full, meaty, texturous flavor, mm. great feeling in the mm. mouth. And in, like you said, this tea is going to go forever. It's uh, right. Oh, and uh, consist consistent. The consistency yes. is really solid. Uh, mm -hmm. Infusion to infusion from uh, from two to four. Of course, the first one can be expected to be an opener and opening up infusion. Second to fourth, the consistency of the flavor uh, it has uh, emboldened uh, uh, slightly, but now it's really, I feel like it's now getting into its stride and we're going to be here for a while. Right. I want, yeah, one of the things we always like uh, comment is oh. when it's such a star, stellar tease, it's consistent. Mm. See, last to the very last infusion. Mm. What do I mean by last infusion? Is the infusion, I feel like this is the last one, then I put some, I feel like there's nothing coming out anymore, and I refill that and let it sit for say the afternoon or even overnight. Next day I, I drink that, the liquor color is barely there, and it's a cold liquor, and I drink it, and it's still full of flavor. Like mm. that's how impressive those teas are. Steady. Right. Really, really impressed with the uh, the lingering flavor. And when we mm. enjoy that cold, I I can tell you this: even when it's cold, it will still have that the right. consistency of that taste in the mouth. You're anticipating tomorrow's sip. Oh, okay, right. we finish, and I'm anticipating a lot more in brews. Mm. Yeah, well, we're for sure not going to be bothered with a two, three, four hour video just to taste this tea. We'll keep going for many, many infusions. But um, I hope this, this short video might not be short by the time it's done. But anyway, I hope this video will give you some idea of uh, how we do tastings and maybe some tips on you know, what you can try when you try to yeah. get some tasting notes off a tea. Absolutely. 
So if you liked the video, please be sure to uh, subscribe down below, click the notification bell so you'll know whenever we go live or post new videos. And until next time, keep steeping. Keep steeping.